Thanks for joining me in our webinar on getting ready to lodge your TPAR, your taxable payments and your report. So TPAR is lodged to the ATO annually and we're going to cover upon that utilising the tool Zero. So who am I? I'm Celeste Pierce and I'm a certified trainer um, at Business Edge Advisors. I help clients get the most out of uh, the Zero platform that they are utilising in making sure they understand their data and what it all means and how obviously they can leverage that in their business. So today's session, what we're going to have a look at are those items there. I think it's important, uh, firstly, that I explain to you what it is the TPAR and who has to lodge it. So it's an annual report that's got to be um, lodged to the ATO if you've been flagged to lodge one by the 28th of August each year. There's a different range of um, industries that have to um, report on this, but in essence, if you're a business owner and you um, utilise different contractors or make payments to different contractors for providing a service to you, then that's where you may need to lodge a TPAR to the ATO. That's what it's capturing. So who's flagged at the moment currently with the ATO to lodge an a a TPAR report? It's primarily that building and construction industry, but it could range um, to other industries such as cleaning, freight, etc. in there uh, as the ATO report up the re open up the requirements for lodging a TPAR. So like I said, it's got to be lodged by the 28th of August each year. Uh, and the ATO utilises this information to match up, um, say, income that contractors are reporting with or without GST, um, making sure that it all correlates in that space. So making sure everyone's been accountable um, to what it is that they're uh, lodging to the ATO in their tax returns. So how do we report this? Well, like today, we're going to cover up on zero and utilising that tool to report this seamlessly to the ATO annually every year. We get the setup right, it's just a task you carry out, a lodgement you carry out each year. Um, and yeah, utilise that software, but you can do it manually or you can engage us or accountants to lodge it for you. They, uh, the ATO also um, have a requirement around that lodgement and there are potential penalties that might be applied if you don't make those lodgements on time or in accordance with um, how the ATO have issued um, you to do so. So just be aware of that. So let's get started and looking at zero as to where we can, as to how we get it set up. So I'm just utilising the demo company today and we are firstly going to have a look at getting this set up properly. So that's where we need to go to our contacts and we're going to have a look at our contacts there. And what we can do is group our contacts. So if we go to groups, we might set up a group called contractors so that every time you're paying a contractor, you can add them into this group. So you can see here, I've got two contacts added in there at the moment uh, into that particular group. The other thing that you can do to do your setups, which um, a lot of clients do, is under their accounting in their chart, I'll just open up the chart, you'll see that they might have a chart called contractors. So you can see here, there's a chart here called contractors. Now, if you have multiple contractors that you're utilising that some are GST registered and some aren't, you might actually want to create two charts one that's GST registered and one's not. It just depends on the level of detail um, that you require in your zero file. But in essence, it's about, in this file, there's two things. There was a contacts, a group contacts there, as well as the chart. So what that means is when you're paying them or receiving money from them, uh, sorry, when you're paying them, that you want to make sure that you're um, reconciling it correctly, adding it to the correct contact, you're not making up new ones as you go, and that you're also putting the right chart in there about contractors. Okay, so the next step that we need to then have a look at is going in to your zero file and going into your reporting. So under accounting, if you go to reports, And then if you go to find a report, you'll find the um, TPAR report. So you just got to write it out in full and you'll see that's the taxable payments and your report that pops up. So in here, you can see that there's each year that you have to um, lodge a TPAR. So it's 
it, it's going to just bring up those transactions that you've obviously put under that group or in that contact. So for the 24 financial year, you're going to have a go. Let's have a look at the rules that are already set up for this and you would follow suit too. So like I said, the contacts, we've got um, different options here. So you can choose all contacts, contractors and support clients is the, what is available in the demo company at the moment. For us, like I said, I'm using the I've created a group called contractors and that's where my contractors that I pay that need to report it through TPAR are being captured under. Then secondly, the other item is those accounts. What chart or if a chart is being utilised, what is it? So in here, I've got contractors. So if I've reconciled a transaction to contractors, it's going to show up in this particular report. So I hit save. Um, I should actually go back and show you. You can actually add other rules if you wanted to as well. If you had anything else, there might be multiple contacts that you want or groups that you might want to add, or there might be multiple charts that you want to add. So you can do that as well. But for this case, this is a simple one that I've set up. It's easy to use, um, you know, year on year and in the reconciling space, not making it too complex. So what it's done is Zero has gone away now and pulled the information forward of who was, um, what transactions were reconciled against that, those contacts that I had in the group and that were reconciled to contractors. So let's have a look at um, reviewing and updating this report. So you can see it's grabbed one contact with only $1,300 gross payments made to them. So there's only been one in that, what the two um, contractors in that group, only one of them actually paid us in the 2024 financial year or that we have made payment to them. And it needs attention. So that there's not enough details in here at the moment to lodge the report. So let's have a look. Let's go inside and have a look at Tracy Green. So in this space, there's a lot of information that, that needs to be populated in and you should be able to find this information on the invoice from the contractor. So luckily I have some information prepared here. So I've got Tracy Green. So Tracy Green should have an ABN. And um, I might not have a bank account number, but I might have an address. So I've got a, a postcode here for them as well in Victoria. So Mount Beauty. All right, so it's just grabbed some information that I've pre-populated in there. And now let's have a look at saving that information in there for me. Oops. Okay, so now I've got Tracy Green's information updated. So when I report it to the ATO against our ABN to Tracy's ABN, it's going to be linked. Now, if I did an ABN lookup, which is a, you know, a tool that you should be utilising all the time when working with contractors, you can review to see whether or not Tracy is GST registered. So why not have a go at doing that right now? Let's go in. Let's chuck in her ABN that I know that I've used. So obviously, I don't know who this Tracy Green is, but I've just put it in. It's just an ABN. It's general information that you can utilise. But I can see here that they're not currently registered for GST. But if you had a look at when the um, payment to Tracy Green was reconciled, it obviously had GST against it, which is incorrect. So that is fine. And this is the item here. So what has happened is this particular transaction has been reconciled incorrectly where we're um, trying to recoup the GST from this payment, but Tracy, in fact, wasn't actually registered for GST. So what has to happen is this needs to be um, fixed. So I can edit the transaction. And it is going to be a um, that's excluded, update it. And now I can go back and uh, whoop, run this report again. So I'll go to accounting, I'll go to reports, report that I'm after. And there's my report there. So now you can see how um, by fixing that reconciliation of that line item, that payment to Tracy Green and removing the GST now, we're reporting it correctly.
so we can review that report. So it's really important that in that reconciliation space that you get it right from the beginning of the financial year. That you, if you're first time working with the contractor, that they give you an invoice that you look up their ABN and make sure that you're capturing the GST correctly. Don't make assumptions or don't necessarily take their word for it. You should always be checking. And of course, subcontractors may register for GST at a later time. Hopefully they notify you, but if not, when you're doing your um, accounts receivable that you're actually checking their ABN regularly to make sure they haven't registered for GST in that period. Uh, and obviously, you know, this would probably then trigger a bit of an event with you've already lodged your BAS for that period, you would then have to go through potentially talk to your accountant about maybe you capture the GST incorrectly um, when you lodge that BAS. But that's what all these checks are for. So what else, else have we got on here? We've got the details. So now we're at the stage where we can lodge the report to the ATO. We're happy with um, our 2024 financial year that we made one payment to a contractor, to Tracy Green, but got her ABN. She wasn't GST registered, so we're just reporting the gross amount that we paid to her. So you can export that format and lodge it manually to the ATO, or you can click on that blue button that says lodge to the ATO. So obviously I'm in a demo company, so it's not gonna let me through. But if you've got experience of lodging activity statements or um, STP, so payroll through zero, it'll just come up with that, um, the screen that sort of says, do you get permission to send this through? Is it all correct what you're doing? And then you just hit yes, and then it'll submit the TPAR lodgement to the ATO. Great, what else can I cover off on for you? What are some other questions? You can obviously report, um, you know, exporting that in the ATO format is a good idea and put it on record so that you know what it is that you submitted the say previous year for your TPAR reporting. Uh, but once it is saved in there, that you'll see that it's it's in there for a period of like forever, it's in your zero file. Because I'm in a demo company, there isn't any other TPARs that you can go back and have a look at. Um, but just for interest sake that you can, you know, download it and put it in your file so that you know that you've done it. All right, so hopefully that was of help for you in lodging your TPAR within Xero. It's not an overly um, exhaustive process. However, if you don't set it up properly from the beginning in your Xero file, it's just gonna be quite a job at the end of financial year to go through. Um, but if you're being reconciling it to that contractor or adding them to the contractor chart or adding them to your contact group for contractors, uh, you'll find that all you're doing is actually reviewing and confirming different things to make sure that they were GST registered or they weren't and that you're capturing the GST correctly. Because at the end of the day, if this was lodged to the ATO, Tracy Green would um, have income reported against um, against you know the bit the demo company that I was lodging it through and it would show up on their tax return. And that's why it has to be done by the 28th of August so that the uh, ATO and the business owners have time to get that information in. And if there's a mismatch, obviously they'll be in contact with you. All right, well, thanks for listening and hopefully this was of help in getting you ready to lodge your taxable payments and your report to the ATO for this tax season. Cheers.